Hey everyone, this is Trunks for you, or Nudie Geeky, depending on where you're watching this from. And this is the review for the Perfect Grade Shah Zaku 2. And this comes as a request from this guy. Bam, right there. Check out his YouTube channel if you want. He does some cool stuff with a lot of Lego, uh, which, you know, everyone loves Lego. So, anyway, let's get underway. And we'll start with the manuals first. Uh, as this is an old model, I built this years ago. I don't have the box anymore, unfortunately. But I do have, obviously, the model. And I can always keep the instruction manuals. And this is the construction manual. Let's start with that. And inside the construction manual is your usual... Nice, big printed pictures, nice and easy to follow. It's not that thick, but it is very interesting to build. I actually loved this build. It's one of the reasons why I, I got the other Zaku after a while as well, because I wanted to build another one. And uh, if I give you an example of the chest, you'll see there's a few screws to put in there as well, and the usual type of stuff. Uh, the screws aren't labelled on the packet, so you'll have to do that yourself when this comes. Just count how many screws there are, and look at the length of them, or the thickness of them, and you'll probably be able to figure out which screws are which. I, and I tend to use a permanent marker on the, on the little plastic cases they come in, so that's not too bad, but <clears throat> it's worth doing that first. And this is the instruction manual, and this is really nice, real nice bright pictures of the model itself, and all the inner detail, which is fantastic detail. Of course, it's been painted on there slightly, I think. And uh, it's it's really nice. It shows the weapons at the bottom there. And obviously, this is just a Zaku, so it's not going to have the greatest weapon arsenal. But what he does have is quite cool. Uh, if you can read Japanese, this is probably a lot more interesting than it seems to me. I, like most people, just like to look at the pretty pictures. But it is really nice. And that's actually thicker than the construction manual. So that's a nice, good read. That's why I like keeping those. So if I put them over there. Uh, I don't have the original decals, or at least I couldn't find them in my drawer of mess. Uh, but I do have the decals from the uh, other Zaku that I made. And that's them. And you get one of these. I'm pretty sure you get exactly this with it as well. But I'm pretty sure you also get another one, or at least a bigger one, with uh, Shah's own... own uh, decals on that with his name and such and different different number registration number for the Zaku and uh, well here's the Zaku itself uh, I apologize if you can see the dust on this I have tried to clean it but it is been up there quite a few years now but that's the perfect grade and I absolutely love the Zaku I think the Zaku is such a great looking mobile suit as you can see I'll start with the flaps, because everyone always does. I'll start with flaps, and as you can see, the flaps come up there on his legs, and they slide outwards first, and then upwards, and you can see the thrusters underneath there. Obviously, this hasn't been painted, so it doesn't look as good as the book, but this is exactly how it would look once it's been built. Sorry if you can see the sprue marks, or the runner marks, depending on what you say, because uh, this is an old model, like I said, and I wasn't as good with the sprue marks back then and the dust. But he's got great detail, the knees come down like that, you can see the pistons in there, nice detail when you bend the leg. Same sort of thing with the arms as well actually. I don't know if those move or not, I cannot remember. No they don't. And you've got all these other flaps that come down, you don't even notice them sometimes, they're very well built in there, just for the inner detail really. And the flap on the back here. There you go. See the inner work in there. And for all you avid painters out there, this is great detail to paint. So when you lift this up, you can see all the... And I've seen someone who's painted theirs, and it looks fantastic, actually. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not the, the best painter, so I tend not to. I tend to just do straight builds. But this is a great example of a straight build, then, for your viewing. And, of course, you've got this that lifts up. You get different head pieces, so you don't have to have this horn. But... You know, it's the commander's horn, so you probably would do if it's Shah Zaku. Uh, all these flaps move here, so you can see the inner, inner detail of, of the leg, hips and that. The articulation is absolutely fantastic as well. Uh, you can pretty much pose this and it will stay in any pose, as you can see. The legs go quite far up there. You've got movable feet here with the flaps that come down as well. And a nice big thruster on the bottom there. These move quite really well because there's springs inside, so however you move it, they, they move with it very naturally. Really, really great. Uh, I don't have a battery for the light 
in the in the face in the in, in the face in the eye. But uh, this one I use the sticker with, and as you probably know these days, I absolutely hate stickers. So I've got my other other one which I painted. I painted the eye with a Tamiya's clear red, and this is really bright now. Uh, this with the sticker, the sticker stop, stops most of the light. So personally, I wouldn't use the sticker if I was you, but if you want to, you can, of course, but it comes out pink, not red, and here's the eye for this one, nice and bright there, really bright, that, that paint doesn't stop any of the light, it's fantastic, and you can see the heat axe here, I didn't paint the axe, I left it white, as if it was turned off, okay, I can't get that off, it's quite stiff because it's been on here for quite a while, there we go, and there's the, the heat axe, which is quite cool, just a few little bits. Here's the heat axe off the other one, which I use that clear red for again. And I quite like, there's the contrast, but I quite like this one with the red. It seems to just, it just looks better. It looks a bit more painted, a bit more detailed, and it looks like it's on when you're using it in his in his hand. So if I pop that back, oh, so I'll put that over there. Uh, and obviously it's good. Again, on the other one, I've painted these, the, the side red as well which is which is really good it looks really really good in the clear paint the Tamiya clear paint I've got with me and that's this little pot here you only need a little bit anyway acrylic paint of course and it's the X27 from the Tamiya series and it's fantastic it comes out really well it's almost like stained glass when it comes out in fact a lot of modelers do use it to simulate stained glass so there's a big plug for Tamiya there because it's fantastic the gun does come off of course and there it is there it is. You do get a little bullet with this as well, like a little spare one that you can drop down like he's been firing. You get the little little catch there if you can see it. And that's to clip into his hand or you can just put it down like that for when he clips onto his back because this can. Let me just uh, put that to the side for a moment. As you can see the colours, you got this sort of darker red in the middle. You got an actual red there, and then the rest of it's more like an orangey red or the sort of light red, and it's quite good actually because it's more screen accurate to the original series, obviously because the colours weren't as bold back then. Uh, you got all this articulation here. You got the shield articulation as well. I've used one deca a couple of decals on the shield there because that's quite plain. Quite, I quite like putting some decals on there. But if you like it plain, keep it plain, or use more decals all over them. Uh, of course, the eye moves. And you can take the, the head off quite easily, just to show you. you. Open the cockpit like that, and he just sort of sits in place between the two on these two little lips here. And to move the eye, here you go. There he goes. Looking around for any of those blasted feddies. There we go. And you can see that there is a little red Shaw figure in there <coughs> by his console. I haven't painted the Shaw figure because, like I said, I'm rubbish at painting. I've only really just got into painting the, the figures. Sorry, I'm, <clears throat> I'm just coming out of a cold, so that's why my voice wants to go all the time. Putting his helmet back, putting the head back in is nice and easy. It just sits back in there, and then you close that up, and it's back on there again. The inner detail on the head is really nice, especially if you do paint it again. And the great thing is, is when you turn the eye, you can see the wires on either side of the eye that go to the LED, which is really good, cool actually, because it looks like real wires in, in a real Zaku. And personally, I think the articulation is fantastic on this. You can do pretty much any any pose you want. Obviously, there's some limitations, and there always will be limitations, but I mean, the head spins like that. You can't really get it. You can't go, actually, any further than that. They've stopped you, but that's good because it's more realistic to the movements that you would expect from a humanoid-looking mobile suit. All the legs get go to there. They've stopped you from moving them all the way around. Oh, no. Yep, stop you from moving them all the way around because you don't need to, and the panels pop off if you do try, as you can see there. This is quite a big kit, actually, as well. It stands about a foot tall, 12 inches or 30 centimetres, depending on whether you like metric or, or the decimal system. Uh, metric or imperial. Whether you like metric or imperial. And you can see it's really sort of a chunky suit. A real nice looking suit with all the contours and all the all the lines in it and that, and it's uh, it's a really nice model, I mean I'm glad I've actually built two of these and I could actually build another one and be perfectly happy about building another one because this is such a great model uh, and it's really fun to build, you get that nice big chunky feeling to the build and we all know that we all love the Xeons because they build big chunky suits. 
So, and of course you've got the fingers, and they're all, they all pose like any normal finger, and they're all separate, they've all got three knuckles on them as well, like that, so you can do anything you want with the fingers, which is great, you've got the little hole in the hand at the bottom, the little hole in the hand at the bottom there, you can see that, and that's where the gun, or your heat axe, will clip into, because the heat axe has a clip on it as well, there's a little a little clip there that pops out. It's a bit of a pain to pop that out, but if you get a pin under there or something like that, that'll pop out nice and easy. But yeah, uh, arms do go all the way around if you really need them to. Put those back there. You can see underneath the arms there, you can see the pistons again for detail, just that little extra detail. That's the great thing about these perfect grades, is you do get that extra added detail compared to master grades, and especially compared to high grades or in graded. Uh, again, I apologise for the dust, it's going everywhere. Panel lining's really not bad on this. You've got these thick, nice, deep panel lines you can get a pen into. And they look great when they're finished. And there's not a great deal of them. Not loads and loads like I've seen on some kits. But there is enough of them to make this kit look really nice. And again, I'm, I'm really impressed with this kit. Even after all these years of it being on the shelf, I'm still impressed when I look at it. It's, it's still a great, perfect grade. And you wouldn't think it's an old, perfect grade, because it is quite an old one now but uh, and it's joints <laughs> are surprisingly tough so when you pose him he will stay in that pose especially if you screw the, the screws nice and tight if you screw them too tight of course he won't move if you screw them nice and tight then he he will stay in place look there you go elbow moves all the way around if you need it to again you've got pistons in the arm I'll let me show you this so when you move the arm the pistons move with it nice detail there and of course something you'd expect for such an iconic suit of the original series that started off all of the Gundam series that followed so they had to do a good job with this and to be fair they have done a good job with this my personal rating of this uh, would probably be somewhere along the line of 8 or 8.5 out of 10 mostly because mostly because one, it gets a little loose sometimes, but the joints don't get loose, it just seems to, things sort of clip out of place sometimes, it looks like something is on there. Uh, it's these bits here, all these round, all these little bits here, and you, you, obviously you've got them all over the body here, and you have to clip them off the sprues or the runners, whatever you like to say, each, uh, and you get the runner marks on them and the sprue marks, and these sprue marks and runner marks are are really hard to get off without them being noticeable and you can probably see this on this, I wasn't very good at uh, filing them down back then and you can see them on there and it's the only problem with the Zarkus in general not just the perfect grades or the master grades, any Zarku and these runner marks or the sprue marks, whatever you like to say, are all over the place uh, and you can notice notice them but you don't really notice them when, it, when it's up on a shelf but you do notice when it's up close and it, it, that is a shame but if you're really good at sanding them down and making it unnoticeable or if you repaint the whole thing because I know some people do like to repaint the whole thing then it's not too bad but for a straight build like this is you do notice them and it it is a bit of a pain but at the end of the day it's a model, it can't be perfect so that's why I give probably give this an 8 out of 10 but that is quite a high rating still, and frankly, my collection wouldn't feel complete unless I had at least one Zaku. And if you're a big perfect grade enthusiast like I am, then a perfect grade Zaku is a big, big must. Cost-wise, is really good. Now, these mostly cost about £90 these days. And if you're in America, uh, I don't know how much they cost. Uh, but in England, they cost about £90. Uh, and that's if you buy from Hong Kong or in England, so that's not too bad. I mostly get mine from Hong Kong anyway, because it, it sometimes works out slightly cheaper. But... Uh, Compared to the normal perfect grades, which are anything from £150 up, I've actually bought one for £250 before now. Uh, this is actually a really great buy, and for a great kit that takes you just as long as all the other perfect grades, and is just as detailed, £90 is a bargain, considering I've actually paid more than £90 before for a master grade. So, here you go. This is a great, great addition to your collection. It's cheap, relatively. And it's just got great detail, especially if you're painting. If you if you if you love painting, you'll love this model because there's so much detail to paint. Uh, it's a shame that there's actually no clear parts that you could put on. And I would advise using the Tamiya paint uh, or any kind of red clear paint because it looks a lot better than the than the stickers. If you're alright with the stickers, that's fair enough. 
uh, but personally, it just it doesn't doesn't block any of the light, and you only need a thin layer. It's acrylic; it dries really quick. And if you need to thin it or wash it off, you can do that with water. You don't have to mess around with spirits or solvents, which will actually damage any plastic parts it touches anyway. So that's fantastic. Uh, thank you for watching. Anyway, uh, that's my review. I hope you liked it, uh, super, because this review was for you. So leave me a comment if you want on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. I've linked my Twitter and Facebook to my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then they'll be right about there. <clears throat> Feel free to leave me a comment. I always enjoy reading people's comments. Uh, if you can see anything in this video you want me to review, just feel free to say, and I will review it, and hopefully I'll get onto that a lot faster than I did for this one. Again, super, I'm sorry that I have been ill recently, and that's why I could not do this earlier. But I, I'm hoping you enjoyed this review. If there's anything I've missed, please tell me, and I will fill in the blanks, or I will make a brand new video if I've missed too much. Uh, so, thank you for watching, and hope you enjoyed the chat.